Godzilla X Kong The New Empire premiered in March 2024 and it was again directed by Adam Wingard who previously directed Godzilla vs Kong. The film also saw the return of several cast members from the previous film such as Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, and also featured a new character that was portrayed by Dan Stevens. Set a few years after the defeat of Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla and Kong have gone their separate ways. Godzilla reigns supreme on the surface, maintaining control over the Titans, while Kong reigns supreme in Hollow Earth. Or so he thought. Kong soon discovers that there is another civilization of giant apes that is led by a ruthless leader known as Scar King. Meanwhile, monarch scientists receive a distress call originating from Hollow Earth, so they soon travel down to investigate. The distress call also catches the attention of Godzilla, who travels the Earth consuming radiation and energy in his path to prepare for a new and upcoming threat. Now before I give you guys my thoughts on this film, I will let you know that there will be mild spoilers in this review. I'm not going to give away much as this film just came out, but in case you don't want any form of spoilers whatsoever, here's your warning. Starting off with some positives, I'm just going to say that just like the previous two films, Godzilla x Kong really delivers when it comes to all of the monster scenes, the fight scenes, the battles, that is 100% worth paying to see it in theaters. I highly enjoyed when each of the Titans were featured on screen. There was never a dull moment. It kept building and building. The fight scenes were incredible. They were visually stunning. They were a lot of fun. Unfortunately though, that's where most of my positives end. My biggest issue with the film was the story itself. If you saw the reaction that I posted after I saw this film a couple of days ago, then you already know that I was not impressed with this film as I was hoping to be. I thought it was cheesy and over the top on many occasions. I thought the story was just wild and just continued to get even more wild as the story progressed. I even mentioned in my reaction that I thought that they took all the cheesiness and the campiness from Godzilla vs Kong and multiplied it by like 50 in this film. To its credit though, I will say that there was never a dull moment. The did a very good job with the pacing it, keeping things going. It was never boring. But what I recently noticed, especially after rewatching the last couple of films, is that this series did a huge tonal shift compared to how it originally was when it started. I remember in Godzilla 2014, it was more dark and brutal, but after each film came out, it just kept building and building and building on cheesiness with weird characters and over the top humor and performances. But again, it's still entertaining for the most part. Quite a bit of the cheesiness in this film uh, revolved around Dan Stevens' character. He played a character named Trapper, who was a veterinarian for Monarch. And I noticed that this film just had to give him some dramatic entrance, even whenever he was first introduced in the film. But there was at least two to three occasions where Dan Stevens would have to go somewhere. And whenever he came back on scene, it had to be a way dramatic and over-the-top entrance and also most of them were accompanied by some 80s or 90s rock song. It was funny the first time but it just got too repetitive. Now again I'm not trying to spoil much but I will let you know that if you're going into this film expecting to see equal parts Godzilla and equal parts Kong then I hate to disappoint but you don't really see as much of Godzilla as I was hoping at least. The film mostly focuses on Kong, but I will say it does make sense considering how the story goes. Godzilla, especially in the first part, he doesn't do much. He makes an appearance here and there, but he mostly is preparing for what's coming in the third act. But I will say that whenever he is on the screen, it's awesome. Now another example of how this story just got really wild was that there's one character, I won't reveal who they are or give any clue as to who they are, just found out that there was just more to them than meets the eye and found out that they were destined for something great. And while it does bring in some surprises that I was not expecting to see, and you know, I will say was pretty cool for the most part, I just really wasn't impressed with how it was executed overall. Now, as mentioned earlier, the film introduces a new villain known as Scar King. I thought Scar King was a decent villain. 
especially for Kong. Another Titan that was introduced in this film was Shimo. I'm gonna be completely honest, I didn't care for Shimo. Personally, I wish that they just would have brought in a familiar Titan that Godzilla has faced. Maybe not in this series, but maybe in previous films like Gigan or Anguirus or even Space Godzilla. That would have been pretty cool. So do I recommend that you guys check out Godzilla x Kong A New Empire? Well, being completely honest, I'm just going to say either way. Again, you'll definitely get what you pay for when it comes to all of the monster scenes and the battles, but... When it comes to the story itself, I wasn't impressed with it. I felt like it was just way over the top and campy and wasn't what I was expecting. I'm going to give Godzilla x Kong The New Empire a C+. But that is going to do it for my review today, guys. Thank you so much for checking it out. I hope that you enjoyed it and found it helpful. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you've seen this film recently, be sure to post your thoughts down in the comments below. Did you like it or did you hate it? Either way, comment down below. I'll be sure to check those out. And if you're new to my channel and you're enjoying my content, then be sure to consider to hit that subscribe button. Have a good day, guys.